My name is Father Chris Morricone. I'm from the Archdiocese of Philadelphia, uh, born and raised here. I was born in Huntington Valley at St. Albert the Great Parish, and I'm a very proud Philadelphian. Uh, Philadelphia is known not only historically as uh, the, the uh, heart of the origin of this, of this country, but also uh, it's a place that in which the gospel has um, has grown and has uh, borne much fruit here. The church in Philadelphia is a wonderful example of uh, the fruitfulness of the gospel. And uh, I'm a, yeah, I have a very thick Philly accent at times. And uh, so we drink not water here, but water. And uh, we don't wash windows, but windows. Uh, so I, it's a great, uh, it's, I'm very, yeah, I'm very proud to be a Philadelphian. And, uh, and uh, yeah, I study at, the Pontifical Biblical Institute in Rome. I finished my second year uh, and I'm headed into my third year there and I'm studying for the Licentian in Sacred Scripture, which uh, has been a wonderful experience. And of course the curriculum at the Biblicum is uh, quite rigorous. It requires a knowledge of the biblical languages of Hebrew and, and Koine Greek but also Aramaic. There are some sections of the Old Testament written in that language. Um, I've really appreciated my time at the Biblicum um, for especially the in-depth and specialized courses uh, in the New Testament and in the Old Testament. They've really opened up my eyes to just the, the, the riches, the, the, the hidden treasures of the word of God. And it's a, been a great experience for, for, for many reasons. Uh, but it also has introduced me to, yeah, the scientific uh, method of research needed to understand the Bible, uh, not only to understand the language, the languages in which it was written, but also to understand how to properly interpret the word of God. And the purpose of all of that, of course, is to bring that word to people, um, to uh, people in the pews and parishes. Uh, and in my instance, uh, to one day teach at St. Charles Borromeo Seminary here in the Archdiocese of Philadelphia. Living and learning in Rome has provided me with a unique opportunity to spend time in the heart of Catholicism, right? Uh, Rome is rightly called uh, the, the center of Catholicism because it is the place where St. Peter and St. Paul bore witness to the faith uh, uh, to their faith in Jesus Christ. And they did that through the shedding of their blood, which is why Rome is such an important uh, place for Catholics. Um, and that word Catholic uh, comes from, and I'm a Biblical student, so I have to know <laughs> uh, ancient languages and where and the etymology of words. Uh, Catholic comes from two Greek words, kata and halos, which means according to the whole. And we've often translated that as universal. Um, so the great gift of studying in Rome and, and being at the heart of Catholicism is that I meet students from all over the world, from Asia, from Africa, from Europe, um, all over the place. And I think that's been a great blessing for me is to realize that uh, the study of sacred scripture and the desire to know the word of God more deeply is something that resounds in the hearts of all Catholics all around the world who wish to come to Rome and to study that word, some of which was written in, in that holy city. So um, I would say that's the greatest blessing of, of learning and living in Rome. One of the greatest differences in how we learn at the Biblicum is first and foremost, it gives you the tools that you need to engage the word of God on your own without the reliance of uh, the insights of another. And this has been really one of the greatest blessings of my education at the Biblicum. Because you're, you spend so much time learning these languages, uh, it gives you the, the ability to, to engage the word of God directly, you know, without the mediation of someone else's reflection on that same word. And the word of God has an infinite um, way of addressing the, the human mind and heart. And so there's an infinite number of ways to, to see the word of God and to understand it. And because each individual comes at the word of God with their own personality and their own background and their own education, they can, with the mind and heart that God has given them, um, understand it and come to appreciate it in a way different from uh, their neighbor. 
one of my favorite classes at the Biblicum was taught by a Jesuit, Dominic Markle. And uh, at the beginning of the course, he, we chose two passages from the Hebrew Bible, one poetic and the other prose. And his uh, method of teaching was fascinating. His pedagogy was something that I will uh, take into my own teaching. He uh, re re uh, forbade us from looking at commentaries until uh, two or three months into the, sem uh, into the semester. And what that enabled us to do was to apply the steps of the exegetical method, which is a method of coming to understand what the word of God means uh, w um, without relying on what other people have said about that same passage. And when I did that, when I really engaged the word of God uh, with my own mind and heart, I discovered something uh, about it that uh, I will remember, you know, and uh, that I have now turned into my thesis and will hopefully uh, turn into a dissertation one day. So the, the pedagogy, especially in that class, but the pedagogy really of, of the Biblicum is to give the student the tools necessary to engage the word of God um, on their own and to discover what God has in store for that person. As I head back to Rome and to the Biblicum in, uh, at the end of this month, uh, yeah, I want to express my very deep gratitude to, uh, to the donors and those who support the Greg and the Biblicum and the Orientale. Um, their support leads to the spread of the gospel. We are all, as priests, as lay people, co-responsible for the spreading of the word of God. That's not something that belongs simply to the clergy, but that is a responsibility of all the baptized. And those who support and donate to these academic institutions are enabling uh, those who study at those institutions to spread the gospel. And there's nothing more important than that. There's nothing more important than um, than uh, than evangelization, right? I mean, the church is at her best when she is evangelizing, when she's taking care of the poor. Um, these are essential aspects of the life of the church and their support and donation and generous contributions to those institutions uh, enable that to take place.